Welcome to the Mount Sunny. I'm Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a little time with us this morning for our Sunday morning worship experience. And I pray that you will receive something that will make your journey a little easier. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would open our eyes to see sin as it really is and then reveal the sin that is in us uh, so that we won't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, our subject for today is what the law can't do. What the law can't do. And uh, I, I realize that a lot of the, the sermons and lessons are repetitious, uh, but hopefully there's, I, what I'm trying to do is put something in each of them that will uh, make things a little clearer. And I realize that it's not... Uh, uh, my ability that will make it clearer. It's the Holy Spirit that will use the feeble attempt that I make to make things and make life more meaningful for, meaningful for you. So what the law can't do is what we're going to look at tonight. And our text comes from uh, Romans chapter 7, verse uh, 15 through 25. Romans chapter 7, verse 15 through 25, and it reads, I'm reading from the English Standard Version, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want to do, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want to, I agree that the law is good. So now it is no longer I who do, do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. And he's talking about in his body or her body. And verse 24 says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. Now, there are two things that uh, I want to try to try, try to uh, share with us tonight. Uh, two points. And the first point is the law cannot enable you to do good. The law cannot enable us to do good. And ver basically, I'm going to be talking, uh, taking pointers from verse 15 through 21. And then the second thing is the law cannot set us free. And verse 21 through 25 on that, the law cannot set us free. So, okay, here we go. Uh, the law cannot enable us to do good. Uh, and I just read uh, those verses uh, 15 through 21 and also uh, the second point that's found in verse 21 through uh, 25 or so forth. Uh, three times in this passage, Paul states that sin dwells in us. In Romans chapter 7, verse 14, verse 18, and verse 20. He was referring, of course, to the old nature. It is also the true, also true that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And in Romans chapter 8, 
Paul explains how the Spirit of God enables us to live in victory. Sometimes the law cannot help us to do uh, help us do it. And the many pronouns in this section indicates that the writer is having a problem with self. And, and, and whenever we are uh, dealing with faith and the Christian walk and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we have to realize that there will be a problem within us. We, we'll have a problem with self because, because God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, nor his word points out the sins to somebody else or, or points out somebody else's sin. He's always pointing out our sins to us. It's, it's a one-on-one -on -one deal. And once he gets us to a usable state, not a perfect state, but a usable state, then he will use more our lifestyle than what we say to help others to see sin within them. And, and we are dealing with the thought of God show me me, an old wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin. Now, this is not to say that Christian uh, have a split personality because we uh, do not have a split personality. Salvation makes us whole. But it does indicate that the believer's mind, will, and body can be controlled either by the old nature or the new nature, either by the flesh or the spirit. The statement here indicates that the believer has two serious problems. Number one is he cannot do the good that he wants to do. And number two is he does the evil that he does not want to do. Does this mean that Paul couldn't uh, stop himself from breaking God's law? That he was a liar and a thief and a murderer? Of course not. Paul was saying that of himself. He could not obey God's law and that even when he did evil, uh, evil was still present with him. Even when he obeyed God's law, evil was still present with, within him. And we must accept the fact that even when we are obedient to God, evil is still present in us. No matter what Paul did, his deeds were tainted by sin. Even after he had done this his best, he had to admit that he was an unprofitable servant. As uh, it's stated in Luke uh, chapter 17, verse 10. So if I find this law at work when I want to do good, evil is right there with me as Paul says in verse 21 of our text. This, of course, is a different problem from that that we discovered in Romans chapter 6. The problem there was, how can I stop doing bad things? While the problem here is, how can I ever do anything good? Now, the legalist uh, says, Obey the law and you will be and you will do good and live a good life. But the law only reveals and arouses, as we stated in last week's uh, sermon, I believe it was. It reveals and arouses. It shows us how sinful it is. It's possible for me to obey the law of God because I have a sinful nature that rebels against, or, or I'm, I'm sorry, it's impossible. There we go. It is impossible for me to obey the law of God because I have a sinful nature that rebels against the law of God. Now, even if I think I have done good, I know that evil is present. The law is good. But by nature, I am bad. 
So the legalist is wrong. The law cannot enable me to do good. It only reveals and arouses sin in me. Now, our second point was the law cannot set us free. Uh, verse 21 through 25, I believe it is, uh, uh, says that, so I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? from this body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. Believers has an old nature that wants to keep him in bondage. Each of us has an old nature that wants his desire, his whole effort is to keep us in bondage to sin. Now, I will get free from these old sins, the Christian says to himself. I'm determined here and now that I will not do this any longer. I remember, and I'm telling off on myself, years and years and years and years and years and years ago, uh, I used to uh, partake of the wrong spirit. I used to drink. And I'd go out and I'd get drunk and come in sick as I don't know what. And I would say to myself, I will never get drunk again. And as long as I was dealing with that drunk, I wouldn't do it again. But the moment I got past, I started planning. And, and, and we all are that way with sin. We, we have a desire to stop. And we say to ourselves, I'm not going to fall prey to that again. But what happens? He uses all his power and energy and for a time may succeed. But then when we least expect it, we fall again. Why? Because we try to overcome our old nature with law and the law cannot deliver us from the old nature. When we move under the law, we are only making the old nature stronger. Because the strength of sin is the law. According to uh, Paul in instructions to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. Instead of being a dynamo that gives us power to overcome, the law is a magnet that draws, us, draws out of us all kinds of sin and corruption. The inward man may delight in the law of God, according to Psalms 119, verse, 1, verse 35, but the old nature delights in breaking the law of God. No wonder believers under the law become tired and discouraged, and eventually some will give up and quit trying. When we are depending on ourselves, we are captive and our condition is wretched. The Greek word indicates a person who is exhausted after a battle, wretched. Remember when we threw our arms up in submission to God's will, his way, and we decide to worship him and him only? 
When we realize that we can't break free of ourselves, then we let go and let God take care of it for us. Peter was drawing, uh, was drowning while uh, doing what he asked Jesus to let him do. It was when he realized that there was no way for him to save himself. It was then that he cried out, Lord, save me. Isn't it good to know that we can cry out to one that can and will save us? What could be more wretched than exerting all of our energy to try to live a, a good life only to discover that the best we can do is still not do good and not be good enough or not do good enough to please God? Is there any deliverance? Of course it is. Paul says, I thank God that there is someone who shall deliver me, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because the, the believer is united to Christ, he is dead to the law and no longer under its authority. Remember when we covered that? But he is alive to God and able to draw on the power of the Holy Spirit. And the explanation of this victory is given in Romans chapter 8. And the final sentence in the chapter does not teach that the believer lives a divided life, sinning with his flesh, but serving God with his mind. This would mean that his body was being used in two different ways at the same time, and that would be impossible. The believer realizes that there is a struggle within us between the flesh and the spirit. But we know that one or the other must be in control. One or the other will win every time. By the mind, Paul meant the inward man, as in Romans 7 and 22, as opposed to the flesh, flesh in Romans 7 and 18. He amplified this thought in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 8. Now, the old nature cannot do anything good. Everything the Bible says about the old nature is negative. No good thing. The flesh profited nothing, according to John chapter 6 and verse 63. No confidence is in the flesh according to Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. And if we depend on the energy of the flesh, we cannot serve God or please God or do anything that is good. But if we yield to the Holy Spirit, then we have the power, the dynamo power, to obey God's will. Acts 1 and 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The flesh will never serve the law of God because the flesh is at war with God. But the Spirit can only obey the law of God. And therefore, the secret to doing good is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. But yield, give way, give over to the Holy Spirit. Throw your arms up and let go and let the Holy Spirit guide you. Paul hinted at this in the early verses of uh, chapter 7 where he wrote that we should bring forth fruit unto God in Romans 7 and 4. Just as we are dead to the old nature, so we are dead to the law. 
but we are united to Christ and live and we are alive in Christ and therefore can bring forth fruit unto God. It is our union with Christ that enables us to serve God acceptably. For it is God which worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. According to Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, it is God which worketh in us both to will, to have a desire to, and to do it without God, we can't even want to. And then when we want to, it's not in us to be able to do it. But God in us allows us to want to and to do it. In other words, God gives us the desire and the power to live according to his will. That's uh, that solved Paul's problems in Romans 7 and 18. He said, for, I, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. The old nature knows no law and the new nature needs woo, no law. Can I say that again? The old nature knows no law and the new nature needs no law because the new nature depends on God. Legalism makes a believer wretched because it, because it grieves the new nature and aggravates the old nature. The legalist becomes a Pharisee whose outward actions are acceptable but whose inward attitudes are despicable. No wonder Jesus called them whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful on the outside, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all unclean. How wretched can we get? The best is yet to come. Hold on. And learn to throw up your hands when you can't and cry out to the Lord for help. In Romans chapter 8, it explains the work of the Holy Spirit in overcoming the bad and producing the good. And I believe that's where we'll go next, Romans chapter 8. Uh, as we learn to lean and depend on the Holy Spirit to overcome the bad and to produce the good. Uh, and that's all I have for us tonight. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to recognize the sin that is within us and teach us to submit to your Spirit as he works to transform us into the people that you desire that we become. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, don't forget, wear your mask and practice social distancing. L let me say, put it this way. Practice social distancing, even in family settings. I'm not talking about those in your household. But when somebody, even, even though they are part of your family, comes into your household or when you go into their household, you still should practice social distancing because you don't know who they contact, come, come in contact, come, contact with. Mm. And they don't know who we come in contact with. So we've got to be concerned about others and ourselves. And the same thing works for both. So even with family that are not a part of your immediate household, practice social distancing and wash your hands often. And let's see, uh, just a few more days and then November 3rd will be here. But vote, 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 please vote. I can't tell you who to vote for but I do stress the importance of each of us exercising our right to vote. And until next time, 
so long.